I'm happy to report there's lots of good news coming out of Winston-Salem State University, including the fact that U.S. News & World Report has once again named Winston-Salem State as number one among public Southern comprehensive colleges in the Bachelor of Arts category. I, it's fantastic news. I'll tell you what else is fantastic. Having a new chancellor who is here in the studio for the first time, we welcome Dr. Donald Reeves. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Thanks Glad for to being be here. here. You came by way of Brown University and University of Chicago, so my first serious question is, are you ready for the weather down here? <laughs> I'm absolutely ready for the weather, especially in January and February. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Yeah, well, that's when I leave town. <laughs> I'll, go, I'll go somewhere else. All right, now, but it, seriously, now, uh, what uh, did you always want to be an educator? I've always wanted to be in higher education. Never dreamed that I would end up being a chancellor or a president somewhere, but when this opportunity came along late last year, I said, look, let's take a look at this, talk to my family, and they said, let's, let's go for it. What have your observations been so far? Well, one of the things that really, that really has kind of surprised me a little bit is the extent to which the community has reached out. And they've reached out in a couple of ways. They've reached out to welcome us to the community, but there is also a tremendous uh, demand from the community for me to get involved in all sorts of things, ranging from uh, the school systems to the chamber to issues and, and all sorts of activities on the campus. Yeah, we're going to stretch you pretty thin here. It's, I've, I've got the, I've noticed that already. Yeah, you, you'll probably be working about 26 hours a day uh, just because if people want a piece of it. You know, they want you to come and sure. speak to them and sure. be involved. And, and, it, and it's good that people reach out to the university like that. It says something about, you know, how they view the university and the community. I think so. Let me put you on the spot a minute. Uh, here's a university, as we said, it's had a, a great track record, some great news coming out of there. Great success with the capital campaign I could go on and on and on now here you come in what in the world are you going to do to either maintain that to sustain it top it what, what are you what are you thinking about well I've been in higher education long enough and I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm reluctant to tell you how long I've been in higher education but it's a long time it's about 30 years and one of the things that I've learned about that about this business is that there's always room for improvement so the the, the progress that's been made at Winston-Salem State University over the last five or six years is tremendous uh, but there's room to get better and I hope to build on the successes of the people who came before me. Let me throw out a few areas that uh, maybe some areas that we want to build on the success about or correct or deal with. One of them has to do with campus security. I noticed a few days ago in the uh, Winston-Salem Journal there was a, an article and you made some really, uh, I think, philosophical and, and, and practical comments about campus security. And you talked about perception and reality. Capsule that a little bit for us and then move into what you think you might do. Well, unfortunately, we'll all, you know, we all recall what happened last, uh, last spring with regards to the shooting that took place off campus that involved, that allegedly involved a, a Winston-Salem State University student. As a result of that, the former vice chancellor um, asked that a vice chancellor's commission on crime and safety be convened. Uh, that, that commission met, it produced a report. I'm now going through that report. It's full of recommendations. Some of them are good, some of them make sense, some of them don't. We've got a process in place. We're gonna whittle that number, I think it's 97 recommendations, down to a, to a manageable implementation plan. And then we're going to, with the assistance of people in the community, the Winston-Salem police, the, the county sheriffs if necessary, uh, members from the community, take a look at those recommendations and roll out the ones that make sense. But at the same time, we have to keep in mind that we are a campus that sits in an urban community. And as a result of that, we are going to be susceptible to the types of crimes and misbehaviors that take place in, right. those, in those communities. But people on the campus, faculty, students, uh, alums, anyone who comes to that campus has to come there and b feel safe when they're on the campus. Sure, and, and they do. And I think we want to clarify again the incident we were talking about it happened off campus. It wasn't anything that was a problem with the university. And of course, all the area universities have had spot crime like this. And so I, th I liked your comment about perception. And I think the perception is that people need to know it is safe. Uh, before we lose time, you, you mentioned something about customer service off camera. What did you mean by that? Customer service is, a, is an issue that we need to tackle. We have to remember as administrators in particular why we're there. We're there to serve the needs of the faculty and the students and we have to make them feel as if they are the most important things which they are on the campus. Better service. It's what every organization that does a good job today is about making sure that they deliver quality, timely service. Graduation rates? Gra number one priority can't be a higher priority. That's why we're there to make sure these kids 
finish there with a degree in hand. I can't let you get away on your first time visit without asking you who your uh, role models or mentors were when you were growing up. I always find that fascinating when somebody comes in for the first time and we've had a conversation. I want to pick your brain. So well, tell me about that. My grandfather. My grandfather was my role model, uneducated man, worked 43 years for the same company, never missed a day's work, and I think that's where I got my work ethic, ethic from and my middle name. Well, we thank him for sending you to us. Will you come back? I will. Thank you, Dr. Reed. Thanks for having me. Appreciate